Jackson County Today. Hot topics, relevant stories, and new developments that affect our community. Deciding on the budget for the county's upcoming fiscal year is always a give and take process that takes a lot of voices into account. Jackson County's Budget Committee, comprised of the three Jackson County Commissioners plus three Jackson County citizens, hears department presentations. Then they deliberate and create a carefully crafted budget for Jackson County. The final step is a vote by the Jackson County Board of Commissioners. At a recent public meeting, County Administrator Danny Jordan shared his thoughts for the next fiscal year and gave an overview of the current health of the county's finances. So first, we have what we call operating revenue. That's revenue that we get. It's constant. It's predictable. We can depend on it into the future. That's like our property tax base. We know every year we can make a pretty good estimate of what we're going to get. We know it's coming every year. And so we use that for operating. We have non-operating revenue. This is where we have a lot of money in our budget. You're going to see it's about $250 million of the $600 million budget is fund balance, reserves, and uh, contingency. Um, we call it non-operating because we don't use it to operate the county because it's one-time money. Once we spend it, it's gone. And if we depend on it for services, we can't sustain those services over time. So this is where we turn to when we need to do major capital projects or we get hit with something we didn't expect in our budget. Or over time, we've used non-operating revenue to make investments. Let's take the county RV park. We invested $10 million out there and now it returns a million dollars a year. We have dedicated revenue. This is the biggest portion of our budget where the money comes to us, but we have to use it for a certain thing or things. And then we have non-dedicated revenue, which the purpose is discretionary. For the budget committee, you're really looking at non-dedicated operating revenue or the general fund revenue where you're making the biggest decisions. Everything else, the decisions are pretty much driven by contract or federal or state or local laws. So if you look at our budget, that 9%, which is the kind of money that we like because we can do whatever we want with it. Only 9% is non-dedicated operating revenue. So that's really where your focus is on making the decisions where it gets spent. The 33% is dedicated operating revenue. So those are places like our roads fund, health and human services, like our airport, where we get money, but we have to use it in those specific categories. Our dedicated non-operating revenue is essentially fund balances in the departments that I just mentioned. And then 20% non-dedicated non-operating is essentially our county reserves. When you look at that total budget, $255,759,576 is the operating budget. All of that other money we don't depend on to run operations. This is how much we have to actually operate the county. And when you look at it, the non-dedicated or general fund portion is only $56,764,890. So most of all the services the county delivers fall in that dedicated category where we don't have a lot of say. We're entering into contracts and agreements that tell us how it's going to be done. Look at that 22%. That's this right here. This is where you guys set the budget targets each year for how the money's going to get spent. 76% is spent in the sheriff, community justice, and DA. I'll tell you that that's really actually closer to uh, 80% because if you look at the health budget where there's 6%, health manages the contracts for gel medical, and that's several millions of dollars that really is being spent on public safety, but it's being managed through our health uh, program. The assessor's 8%. I know everybody thinks public safety is our number one priority, but for us and all of the local governments, assessment is probably really the most important thing because without assessment, nobody has any money to do any of these services. Our general fund reserves in this proposed budget are approximately totaling $119,214,669. You see it raised quite a bit from $107 million projected in the current year's budget. $97,671,132 of that's general fund reserves. We set aside that $11.5 million for cash flow. We're fortunate in our county because many local governments don't have that kind of money and they actually have to go out and take revenue anticipation bonds or loans to run their governments until they start getting taxes. Of that roughly $11.5 million growth, Six and a half million came from a combination of carry forward. And under, in other words, in the current year, people underspent their budgets in the general fund. We're projecting that about 2.8 million. And then we have interest income for 22, 23, and also 23, 24, because we're in 23 and we're going annual by interest income of 1.2 and almost another million. One of the reasons we carry a large reserve is we, we earn interest off of that reserve, which is a great thing. Right now, interest rates are going up. We're able to make investments in higher yields 
and we'll accrue more interest. We don't budget interest as an operating revenue because it's not can't be depended on. We're not sure exactly what it's going to be like. Instead, we dump this into our fund balance and it goes into projects like putting a roof on a building or new cameras in the juvenile justice building or any kind of building improvement projects is typically what we've used interest income for in the general fund. We also had underestimated property tax collections by about half a million. So about five and a half million of that increase in the general fund reserves is because of those things. We received the local assistance and tribal consistency fund dollars of 4.2 million. So we're essentially using that against general fund expenses, which will increase the ending fund balance of general fund. So we wanted to be able to have more freedom with that money when we go to use it and spending it now in the general fund rather than using it on a capital project removed a lot of barriers. In the budget, total reserves contingency and ending fund balance is about 250629000 In the current year, it was two hundred nine, So that's $41 million increase. And then the dedicated fund portion also went up very significantly. Of that, about $18 million is the airport. That's mostly all ARPA revenue. Health and Human Services was up about $3 million. And uh, roads and parks uh, was up about seven million. You'll see that personal services went up. You know, inflation's huge for us. Uh, you see five percent CPIs. Fortunate right now with PERS rates being locked in. Wait to see what happens next year. But with the significant decline last year, moving into this year in the market, uh, I do expect us to see a bump in that again. Capital outlay is down quite a bit, about a reduction of $8 million in roads and parks, and that's because of the expenditure towards the Foothill Road project already being made. Parks is down because we're finishing up the new docks out at Howard Prairie. Then you see our ending fund balance grew, which I kind of already explained that to you between dedicated and non-dedicated funds. So if you had to wrap our budget up into one picture, that does a pretty good job of it. (music) 